It is an interesting thing to have a life. A perplexing thing, a complex thing to have a life. We have to be so responsible to and for our lives. But what is life? What is life? Many of us believe that life is work. That life is pain. That life is burden. That life is family. That life is work. Fewer of us believe that life is freedom. That life is purpose. That life is liberation. That life is exploration. That life is joy. That life is love. So what is life? This thing that we are so beholden to, so responsible to, so responsible or irresponsible for life. To be both spirit and flesh, both love and fear, both physical and metaphysical, to exist as both Earth and ether merge together into one cosmically divine form to experience the world as a human being. A living, breathing Fibonacci spiral, a walking star tetrahedron, a fractile version of the entire universe. We opted into this experience. And life is a classroom, an experience that takes time to understand, that takes time to master. This life is a journey, a journey to become. And on the journey to become, there are pit stops along the way, puzzles that have to be solved and clues that have to be gathered for our next part of the journey. Let us venture into the octahedron and use our clues to unravel the mystery of joy. See, joy is planted inside of us at inception as a gift from creation and is nested inside of the crevices of our hearts. And some of us never get a chance to see it root or blossom or mature because we are always waiting for someone else's sunlight and water to bring it to maturity. I imagine that it looks like a topiary evergreen, our joy. We are ever responsible for its cultivation, but oftentimes we are so unsure of how to cultivate it that we contract out our work to local gardeners to grow our joy for us. We inappropriately assign them the job as experts of our joy. And then problems arise because our joy is unique to us. No other person can ever truly know how to cultivate one's personal tree of happiness, how to grow your seed or what it is that it needs. It has unique cosmic codes that no one knows or could ever know. Only you could know, I could know for myself, my own joy. They will never know how much water or sunlight or lack thereof will make your joy grow or wither or die. Only you know, only you truly know. For some to access their joy, they have to experience a great tragedy, one that cracks the crust from around the heart chakra, allowing it to open. And when that happens, your joy becomes unbound and can sprout. You become and you begin to enrich your own soil. And suddenly you begin to see your life differently, experience your life differently. You begin to smile more and dream more and hope more. 
You believe in yourself more. You are more compassionate. You love more. You forgive more. You heal more. When you are tapped into your joy, joy is the essence of your life. It is the foundation without joy. Can you truly experience love? Without joy, can you truly live? Joy is life. Joy is love. Joy is a microcosm of cosmic expression. It is an interesting and perplexing thing to have a life. To understand joy and love and pain and fear. And the illusion of it all. To be alive, to have a life, to be a life. May we all make the most out of our lives. May we not move hastily, dredging through our journey, but rather, like water, flow, love, laugh, learn, and evolve through it with joy in our hearts. Enjoy your journey.